So why is it important to forget those things that are behind? Because the only day that you have is here today. Because you can't do anything about yesterday and you're not promised tomorrow. So today's your day. And we can't do anything about the past, whether it's good or whether it's, it's bad. It's gone forever. So what you do with today is important. What you do with your giftings is important. What you do in response to God's commands to you are important. That's what you are responsible for. We're here and we're here uh, to rejoice in our God this morning, but also to dig into his word this morning. So if you have your Bible, would you turn to Numbers chapter 11? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. children of Israel in this passage have come out of Egypt um, they're going through the wilderness and they're on their way to the promised land this should be an exciting journey amen it should be an exciting journey it should be an exciting journey amen, amen. they've come out of the bondage of Egypt they're heading to the promised land the promised land was a land that God had promised for his people the place that he had promised for his people but as they're going through the wilderness and it's tough listen to what happens numbers chapter 11 verse 4 and the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting and the children of Israel also wept again and said who shall give us flesh to eat we remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic but now our soul is dried away there is nothing at all beside this manna you can nearly see their attitude beside this manna before our eyes can we go to numbers 14 too just for the sake of time numbers 14 verse 2 and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation said unto them would God that we had died in the land of Egypt or would God we had died in this wilderness and wherefore hath the Lord brought us onto this land to fall by the sword and our wives and our children should be prey? <coughs> were it not better for us to return into Egypt and they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. It's pretty sad, isn't it? It's pretty sad, isn't it? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for who you are this morning. Thank you for Andrew's testimony. Thank you for Peter's testimony. Um, Lord, we just settle in your presence. We, first of all, acknowledge you. You're the focus of this service. Lord, take away every distraction that the enemy would try to bring upon us. Lord, we just need to feel your presence. We need to hear your voice. Would you speak to us this morning? Lord, your word matters. Lord, your word is fresher, more up-to-date than tomorrow's newspaper. Lord, within this book, Lord, we have the answer to everything we're going through at the moment. Lord, this book is alive, it's active. So I pray that you would speak, speak to each of us this morning. And oh God, I just pray this in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I've called this message this morning, you cannot look forward when you're looking back. You cannot look forward 
you're looking back. God does not want us as his people living in the past. Would you agree? He does not want us looking back or turning back to our old ways or to our old life. Amen? He also does not want us meditating upon our past hurts or our past failures because they are many. Um, of course, the most liberating thing for us as believers this morning is when we come to Jesus and that he removes our past. Would you agree? That is the most liberating thing. Um, he forgives all of your past sins and he removes your shame and he removes your guilt and he heals all your past wounds. That's what Jesus does. That comes with the package of salvation. This produces a clean slate, a fresh start, a new life, and a future hope. That's what comes with the new birth. That's what God has for you. That's what God has for me. God's people in Scripture were always meant to be moving forward. They were never designed to turn back, be in retreat, or to run. That is probably one of the reasons why there is no protection for the back in the Christian armor. One of the reasons. You have no body armor on your back. And I believe one of the reasons is that we don't turn our back on the enemy. We keep moving forward. Even if we're weak, we keep moving forward. Um, God's message to Israel in Exodus 14:15. Numbers 2.24 and Numbers 10.5 was, go forward. Go forward. This is the same instruction that he gives us in the New Testament today. In Philippians 3.13 and 14, Christians are said to be reaching forth onto those things which are before. As they press toward the mark, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So the direction of the believer is forward, not back. Christians are not on this earth to float about aimlessly through life. That is because we are going somewhere. We have goals. We have a destiny. We have a glorious future. Uh, we have a plan and purpose to accomplish in this life. Would you agree? We're not looking back to the old life. We're looking forward to the promised hope. We live each day in response to his assignment for our lives. We're here to accomplish the call of God. By the way, do you know what the call of God for your life is? That should be the, one of the most important things in your life. Why am I here? Now, if we know collectively why we're here. We're here to glorify God. We're here to fulfill the Great Commission. We're here to encourage each other. We're here to reach the lost. But do you know why you are acting here personally? What's your actual purpose for being on this earth? Once you know that, that can help you move forward. A lot of the times people don't know what their call is, what their giftings are, and therefore they find themselves always looking back the way instead of looking forward. By the way, if you jumped into the car with me and says, we're going to Sioux City, and I jumped into the front seat and I started to drive the car like this, how do you think, how comfortable would you feel? I mean, we started to drive, I started to head over the railway, and I drove like this here. How would it go? How do you think the journey would go? How do you think, how far do you think we would get? <laughs> but honestly, the problem today is there's many, many people that are, that's the way their spiritual journey is. Literally, that's the way they're driving. And we wonder why there's so many shipwrecks today. So many, because they're not looking forward, they're looking back, and they can't move from what is behind. I want to dig a little bit deeper in our message this morning. Uh, if you want an example of how it looks and how we're meant to be, there's a great testimony that we find it in 2 Timothy chapter 4. And this is the way that it's meant to be. 
Listen to Paul as he comes to the end of his life. He's had a, a very testing life. We preached on Paul about three weeks ago. He had a brutal life at times. He went through a lot. He had a lot of mountaintop experiences, but he also had a lot of valleys. Listen to how he sums up his life in 2 Timothy chapter 4 on his deathbed. Uh, Andrew talked about the deathbed this morning. Listen to Paul's story in his deathbed. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. What a way to finish. What a way to finish and say, I've finished my assignment. The sad thing today is you ask most Christians, they don't know what their assignment is. So how can they say, well, I've done it. I've finished what he has called me to do. And I want to say, brothers and sisters, this is one of the main problems within the church in this day. People think their assignment is just turn up in church on a Sunday. That's not your assignment in life. That is just a given. That's what God's people do. Just like birds fly, fish swim. God's people are born to fellowship. But that's not your personal assignment. If you have no call in your life, no spiritual assignment, no ministry, no goals, no destination, then there's no plan and purpose to your life. You're totally directionless. Where are you going? Literally, where are you going? If you don't have goals. It would shock you how many people actually live in the past. Whether it's in past glories or past failures and distresses, many miss the moment today and struggle to look forward because of the past. You know, there's a lot of things you and me have done in the past that we regret. But we cannot change. <laughs> would you agree? Andrew's talked about the past life. We've messed up. We've failed. We've fallen. Um, we've all been hurt. Amen? There, we've all had experienced hurt. We've all experienced betrayals. Friends have let us down. Circumstances have not always went the way we thought they would go. Uh, we have had to endure adverse circumstances and brutal seasons. That goes with the territory of life. Regardless of what you've had to suffer in life, how many people have broken your heart or betrayed your trust, regardless of how many hurt or rejected you are, or how disappointed or depressed you are about life, God wants to heal you. Wants to heal your past. But the $64 million question is, will you let him? Will you let him? Do you prefer your wounds to God's healing? Because once God heals, then you can move forward. A lot of the reason people can't move forward is because their wounds are not healed. So when they talk to you, they talk about yesterday or 10 years ago as if it happened just here, right now. Please know the key is with you and no one else. You're going to have to let go of your past in order to move forward. You're going to have to let Christ carry that heavy burden instead of you. You're going to have to forgive the perpetrators and release them and let God deal with their wrongs. If you do, you will experience deliverance. You'll experience peace. You'll experience joy. You'll experience healing. You'll experience power. There are also, and I want to say this, there's also friends and family that were once here, but they're now gone. We miss them. Amen? Yeah. But we cannot let their loss ruin our today and our tomorrow. We must go on. That's because our work on this earth is not done. It is easy when a, someone very close to you goes. It's very easy to let that affect your today and your tomorrow. You lose a spouse. 
lose a child, lose a parent, lose a brother, lose a sister, lose a very close friend. And it leaves such a void that literally you feel like life has come to an end. What happens? They just live in the past, the good old days. It's easy done, by the way. By the way, there's people in my life that I wish I could just have five minutes with. I wish they could come back for five minutes. I miss my dad. There's times over this last year, I would love just to sit down with him for five minutes and just unburden my heart and tell him what I think of him. You know, when he passed away, I was 26. And you know what? There's so many things I wish I had said to him that I didn't. You know what I'm talking about? You just, do you ever wish you could just get five minutes? Just five minutes to hug them? Five minutes to talk to them? Five minutes just to listen to them? Maybe you just want to listen to them. But, you know, but what I'm saying is, it's okay to reminisce, but we can't live in the past. Does that make sense? I don't think there's a problem to, to, to think about the old days, but if we, if we live there, then honestly, we're missing the opportunity of today. And it's very easy to do. It's very easy to go there. There's people that maybe you know and I know. I'll go and visit them, and they're good people. But honestly, the whole conversation is just what it used to be like. That's all. That, and at the end, there's nothing about today. There's nothing about tomorrow. It's all about, do you remember back then we did that and this? And I just wish we were back there. Them days are gone. Yeah. <laughs> Them days will never appear again. You have to draw a line onto the past. That's because there's nothing you can do about it. It's gone. That chapter is closed. If you achieved what you were meant to do in that part of your journey, then you will have a future reward for that. But you cannot live in past victories. Today's battles are fresh. They're new. If you didn't achieve what you were meant to achieve, then you have to learn from it, move on, and use it as a stepping stone to put the ball in the net today. Okay, there's a scripture. It's not in my notes. But I appreciate it because we've all been neglectful. There's a verse that says that God would give you back the years, yeah. not the days, the years, mm -hmm. that the canker worm and the palmer worm has eaten up. Yeah. Maybe you, you look back and say, you know, I've, I've, there's a few years that's just gone in my life. I don't know. I've just let it go. I haven't been active for the Lord. I haven't been effective for the Lord. I haven't been fruitful for the Lord. Well, guess what? He can give you those years back supernaturally. He can give you fresh opportunities. So what I'm saying is that whilst we don't live in the past, God can give you fresh opportunities. Yeah. Let me illustrate. You can be focused on what you have achieved in the past. But the important issue is what has that produced in you today? Um, you can be concentrated on the hardship that you <laughs> had to endure in the past also. But the key question is, what has that produced in you today? Have you exper has your experiences made you stronger, smarter, wiser, and more mature? Or are you a victor or a victim? Are you active or are you lazy? You, that there that has happened in the past will produce something today. Would you agree we are all the result of two things, circumstances and influence? Yeah. We're all. So you find yourself today, right on this Sunday morning, you find yourself right here. You are a result of everything that's happened to you. Whether you're victorious or defeated, the reason why you're victorious is because you've overcome in the past. If you're defeated this morning, the reason why you're defeated is because life has really overcome you. Amen? Amen. Does that make sense? So what I'm saying is we can't divorce ourselves from the past, but we're not meant to be looking back constantly. Um, to move forward, you have to let go of stuff, get over it, release yourself from its destructive power. 
That's why Hebrews 12, 1 says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Now, I used to love running. My distance in running was 400 meters, 800 meters, and 1,500 meters. Those were my distances. Anything further than 1,500 meters was just too much for me. I, I could do it, but I wasn't, I wasn't being successful at it. So I kind of knew my limitations. Sprinting wasn't my, like, I could run okay, but just want to come to sprint, and that wasn't my distance. In fact, my brother and me, that was our distance. The only thing is he was a brilliant sprinter as well. He was a sprinter. He was a 400-meter runner, 815. So we were constantly competing, constantly. Like if he pushed himself, I was going to push myself further. If I pushed myself, he was going to push himself further. So, but one thing I learned in running is you had to always get your, your mind fixed on the finishing line. Yeah. You had to pace yourself. You had to be determined. You, If you ended up running the, the race looking behind you all the time, I'm telling you, you're, it would play with your head, it would knock you off course, and you would lose. So I always learned that you always had to look forward. And when you see that finishing line, honestly, you went for it. You just give it your all. You press toward that. Well, it's the same spiritually. The only time that God wants you to meditate upon the past is in regard to his faithfulness to you and his people. Also, well, that's why we have the word of God. We see his faithfulness written all over this book. He also wants you to remember his death. So that we can appreciate what he has done for us. Amen? Amen? So when I say this, I have to qualify it. Okay? But I want you to listen to this scripture because it's very applicable. Philippians 3.13 Brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it. But this one thing I do, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth onto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Can you imagine if Paul the Apostle lived in the past? Think about the guilt. Think about the shame. Think about the condemnation. He had blood on his hands when he came to Christ. But when he came to Christ, his hands were clean. You can imagine him sitting in a service. I, I, maybe it's my, my imagination gone wild. You can imagine him sitting in church and he sees a, a widow at the back with three kids. You can imagine him thinking, That's, she's a widow because of me. You know, what I'm saying is he could have lived there. But Paul said, this one thing I do, I have to forget the past. There's things in the past we have to forget about. There's things in your past you're going to have to let go of. Amen. And I can assure you, if you're a born again believer in this house this morning, if you have been washed in the blood of Jesus and you're still carrying guilt, okay, there's a problem. Now the problem is this. That you probably haven't let go of it and or you haven't received his forgiveness but sometimes we kind of hold on to it, like our wounds our hurts our guilt and we carry it and we won't let go of it because we've become familiar with it and we nearly own it that's that's our identity and we hang on to it like well you, you don't know my story peter if you'd walked in my steps and you you, you would have sympathy for me. But it's all on me. But he come to set us free. And there should be a sense of closure when you come to Christ. Brother, sister, if you're a believer, you don't have a past. So who is throwing your past up at you? The accuser of the brethren. So you're going to have to, by faith, let it go, put it under the blood of Christ. And realize that when he forgives, he forgets. It's gone. It's forgiven, it's forgotten about. Now believers might forget about it. But I'm telling you, God forgets about it. And to be honest, that's all that matters. When people come and say, oh, I remember you saying that 10 years ago. I'm like, I thought we sorted that out. 
I know I sort of did it with God. But what I'm saying is, be quick to forgive. Because God is quick to forgive. Now, I can't say be quick to forget because honestly, probably like me, you struggle to forget things that people have done. Would you agree? I mean, I don't, I think God has that capacity, but you know, we forget the things we don't want to forget. Huh? Seriously. No, but the things that we're meant to forget, we don't forget. You know, there's things I want to remember and I can't remember them. Right. But there's stuff that I, I want to forget and uh, honestly, I can't get rid of it. Yeah. It's just like it's dangling there, but that's not because I want it. Sometimes the devil just takes that and he just, at an applicable time, he just hits you with it. So why is it important to forget those things that are behind? Because the only day that you have is here today. Because you can't do anything about yesterday and you're not promised tomorrow so today is your day and we can't do anything about the past whether it's good or whether it's, it's bad it's gone forever so what you do with today is important what you do with your giftings is important what you do in response to god's commands to you are important that's what you are responsible for in our reading this morning the children of Israel are lamenting. Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fish, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. You can imagine they're dreaming. They're dreaming about Egypt. But now, beside this manna, what manna were they talking about? Who gave that manna? This is a sad place that they arrived at. I'm telling you, people who profess God, and they're looking at what God has provided, and they're turning their nose up at it. Can you see the disdain? All we have is this. Look, every day the same thing. Same provision, every day. There seems to be a tendency among human beings when they're going through testing trials and difficult seasons on their path to look back and yearn for the old days. But nothing could be more foolish. You know, a lot of reminiscing is delusional. Do you know why? We quickly forget about the difficulties that there was in that season. Like, think about Egypt. <laughs> They're, they're thinking about the garlics and the lamb, <coughs> melons and leeks and all this. There's no thought of how harsh the, the, the Bible calls it a furnace of fire, Egypt. They were going through the fire. There's no thought of that. They would rather have that there, what the devil was doing to them, than God's provision in the wilderness. This is awful. So here are three observations I've noticed about backsliders, okay? Three. Number one, when people start to backslide, they start to turn their nose up at the provision of God. They're unthankful. They're more interested in satisfying their own flesh than pleasing God. They prefer the bondage of Egypt to the difficult path to freedom because they prefer, they prefer the provision of man over the provision of God. Number two, when people start to backslide, they start to murmur and complain. Significantly, they see the faults in other people and not in themselves. Other people are the reason why they are in the miserable, apathetic state that they're in. No. You're like that because you choose to be like that. Amen? Amen? Amen. Number three. When people start to backslide, they begin to look back to the old life. They start to reminisce about the good old days, the days of freedom when you did what you wanted to do and you could be who you wanted to be. They were the days. Were they the days? When you could do whatever you wanted, were they the days? Some people live sentimentally in the past and cannot move into the present and enjoy the moment 
because things are not the way they used to be. The problem is they then opt out of their assignment for today. You know, I was I was thinking about my message yesterday and I was out for a bite to eat with Andre. And he started talking about back in the day. That's what he used that phrase back in the day, you know. Like, <laughs> so we started to reminisce a bit about back in the day. And I'm like, Andrew, I was telling him what I was going to preach on today. <laughs> but you know, what I'm saying is it's okay to reflect back on some of the, the victories of the old times, amen? But we don't live there. There's a big difference. Because Andrew is today. I am today, you are today. What we are because we did get victories back then. We listened to the voice of God instead of the voice of the devil. And if we didn't, we probably wouldn't be alive today. You wouldn't be alive today if you'd listened to that wrong voice that wanted to literally destroy you. Can I remind you, you don't need to look too far back to a day when the devil wanted you to destroy yourself. Or just some let the devil destroy you for some something that he was putting before you so the bible has a message for looking back and for people that are looking to the good old days ecclesiastes 7 10 says say not what is the cause that the former days were better than these for thou dost inquire does not inquire wisely concerning this So it's saying is, don't say that those days were better than today. (coughs) Brother and sister, we can't reach our destiny when we're living in the past. It will prevent us from seizing the moment. Andrew can identify with this, but when I go back to Northern Ireland, things are different. I guarantee if you went back to an old workplace or to an old church, or to somewhere where you've been 10 years ago. Things are changed. Everything's different. And we can we can dream about those days, but though that chapter has closed. That day has moved on. This is a new day. This is a fresh day. This is a day of new opportunities. And I'm going to quote a verse in a, a minute that actually backs that up. Um, Isaiah 43, 18 says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye know of it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Can I read that once more? Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen. That's a promise. That's also a command. While the current situation for you may be difficult, God is promising that he will make a personal way in the wilderness and he will give you refreshment in the desert. So, in Numbers 11, 18, they started to complain. They started to lament about the food. Um, let's look at the response from God. And say thou unto the people, sanctify yourself, yourselves against tomorrow. For ye shall eat flesh. So they wanted flesh. Guess what God gave them? Flesh. Now listen to this. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. But listen this. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two, nor five, neither ten, nor twenty, but even a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils. And it will be loathsome unto you. Listen, because ye have despised the Lord. All they're complaining about what God had given, they were actually in God's eyes despising him. That's big speak. You've despised the Lord. 
which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we out of Egypt? Basically, why do we find ourselves where we are today? We've done all these things for God, and why are we going through what we're going through? You'll find in Scripture where there's murmuring, complaining, he interprets it as despising him. The reason why God hates that is because the root of that is unbelief. And unbelief is contrary to faith. Because faith is what pleases God. So if you're not living by faith, you're going to be discontented. And in whatever way that discontent works, if you pull the root of that up, it's unbelief. I have a question. Is there someone here this morning? And you're discontented? You're complaining? You're murmuring? You're just not happy? When people talk to you about the things of God, it's there's no life. Brother, sister, this is God's word here. We we can see how he looks upon it. We we also quoted Numbers 14 too. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto him, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt? Or would God that we had died in the wilderness? And what did they say? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? Let us make a captain and let us return unto Egypt. Oh, how wonderful. How wonderful. Let's raise somebody up. Lead us, lead three million Jews right back to Egypt. Let's go back. Let's get boats over the Red Sea. Let's go back to Pharaoh. Is that the answer? What an attitude. This literally happened. By the way, there's something in this that is applicable to every generation. So if you want to know what the opposite of the revival is, this is it. It's so hard to get your head around why the people of God would prefer the bondage of Egypt to the path to freedom and the promised land. By the way, the path to freedom and the promised land was painful. The wilderness was not easy. So please know that I get it that they were struggling and they got fed up with the same food every day. Here we go again, same thing. But it goes on in Numbers 14 to say a little bit more. And this is God's response to them. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swore unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. That's pretty sad. Looking back literally cost most of these Israelites the promised land. God could not let them into the promised land because of their attitude. God actually says that this attitude of complaining provokes him and prevents his, period, his people from experiencing blessing. Who wants to experience the blessing of God? Okay. Who wants to experience the promised land? Okay. Well, brother, sister, here's a warning. Here's a warning to you. Here's a warning to me. And I don't want to go here where Israel went. <laughs> so, what was God's medicine for these people that were not satisfied with God's challenging path to victory through a harsh wilderness? What was his medicine? What was his heavenly provision for them? Well, they basically went in circles for 40 years. Deuteronomy 2 1 says, Here's the testimony. We compassed Mount Seir many times. And the Lord spoke to me, saying, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward. Now, the many days of circling round and round Mount Seir was approximately 40 years. 
Can you imagine it? Going in circles for 40 years? Round and round. They kept going round and round. They kept going round and round in circles until they all died. All those that were over the age of 20 had to die. Apart from two men. <coughs> two men that had faith. Caleb, Joshua. Is there someone here this morning? Like that, you're going in circles. You're not going forward, you're going in circles. And I urge you, get your eyes on the Lord, bow the knee, listen to God, and seize the moment. Today's your day. The past should not define who you are and what you do. As I come to close, listen to the solemn words of Jesus in Luke 17, 32. Remember Lot's wife. What does she do? Now, Genesis 19, 17 tells us that the, shows us the angel sent a message to Lot and his family. And the message was this, escape for your life, look not behind you. <coughs> Brother, sister, when God tells you to escape and not look back, guess what? <laughs> Don't look back. I'm telling you, but, well, maybe a little peek to see, you have a little peek, kind of sideways peek. You, you know what we're all like? <laughs> Oh, can I? I'll do it. Like I want to see what's happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, this was the command. By the way, you don't negotiate with God. You keep the word, or else you don't. So this is what happened. Genesis nineteen twenty four. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah fire and brimstone out of heaven, and He overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities. And that which grew upon the ground. So trees, animals, everything were just mute. <laughs> but listen to verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him. And she became a pillar of salt. This happened. This literally happened. By the way. Have any of you been to the Dead Sea? In Israel? Where's the saltiest place on earth? The saltiest water on earth. The Dead Sea. You can literally, I've been there. You just, you, you get into the water and it's just so buoyant, you just sit, you just lie back, I guess, and you float. That's the lowest place on earth, by the way. Think about that. This is in the same plane. People say God's not real, you can't prove God. Of all the places in the world, where's the Lord? This happened to Lot's wife. Where did she lose it? First of all, she disobeyed the voice of God. She looked back. She had left Sodom, but Sodom had not left her. Is there someone like that today? Your heart, you're here, but your heart's not here. Your heart's somewhere else. Well, guess what? Wherever your heart is, that's literally where you are. Your brother Condenon said this quite a few times. If your heart is in the bar, instead of being in the presence of God, with, that's where you are today. That's where your heart is. That's, that's where you, the real you is. You'll go where your heart takes you. So, that's why Jesus instructs us in Luke 9, 62. And please hear this. No man, having put his hand to the plow and looks back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Isn't that powerful? No man, nobody, not a human being, who puts their hand to the... What, what do you take out of that? Like, with farmers in the house this morning. What do you take when it's talking about the old days? Like... So a man takes the plow. You can imagine the old days, the horse is kind of pulling the plow. And the, the, but anyone who puts her hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. What do you think he's saying? He's not in it. He, 
his heart is not in it. The farmer, whenever he's at his work, his heart, he's, he's focused on those furrows. We can't watch videos probably of the old days. I know they still do. Sometimes some of the big shows, they do the old time plan. But I can tell you that that farmer back, back in the day had to keep his eye on those horses and that ply to make sure that line was straight. He couldn't be going, you might as well do it like this. Right. Huh? But do you get do you get the message? Yeah. Sometimes it's hard for us to get the illustration because we live in a day of big combine harvesters and all big tractors and whatever. <laughs> but what it's saying is, how are you meant to fulfill your purpose for this life whenever you're you're totally you're totally you're, you're facing the wrong direction? Yeah. It just won't happen. <laughs> Today is your day, brother. Today is your day, sister. And listen, this is instruction from the Lord himself. Here's the sobering part. If Israel would have simply trusted God and went forward, they could have traveled from Egypt to the promised land in 11 days. 11 days. However, they looked back. They began to complain. Ironically, it took them 40 years. So sad. But there's a lesson for you and me here today. We choose. But the instruction time after time after time is look forward in Scripture. Go forward in Scripture. So I urge you today, with whatever strength that I have, I urge every one of you today, it's time to take your eyes off the past. And it's time to move forward. Let's pray.